The lights were on in the classroom when I woke up. All the rele revelations that came to me were taking their toll. While I understood I was built strong, this was still tiring. And I didn't know what to believe anymore. What time is it? According to what me said, our talk only lasted several seconds. After my little vision though, I saw multiple hours passed since, had passed since. Normally this would have killed me. Thanks to my meddling, since the game was different, it hadn't. I figured I had only woke up now because I had been turned offline and so I hadn't experienced time passing. Did I miss everything? At least I'm back now. I remembered all of a sudden that this was the classroom I passed out in earlier, along with Avaritia and Nvidia when Marco walked in. Marco? Where are you? Marco? But he hadn't answered. He didn't answer. After a short look around, I realised they weren't here anymore. He left the area with Avaritia and Nvidia. Did they leave willingly though? Assuming they passed out like I had, Marco probably carried them away. I was alone now. Not only was I alone, but I knew me was gone too. Erased. I shuddered at that thought. Rising up, I dusted off my sweater dress and left the room. Let's recapitulate really quickly. The three questions asked of me here were, who am I, where am I, and what am I, but I know who I am now. I am E288. It's awkward, and not really a name. And what does E288 even mean? As for my location, I think I'm in a replicated skill. This is definitely not a normal skill, so this is probably only a structure made to look like the Hyacinth Daylawn Polyvalent High School. And for what I am, I already know that. I'm an ex-machina, an alpha model, a robot, a person but not a person, a robot but not a robot, an AI. That means I solved those three questions, but many more remain. I walked out of the hallway to go back to the crossroads. Just like before, the plates were closed up. And yet, something didn't feel correct. I traced my hand over the metal plates separating the stairs from the middle area. I stopped to think about the school, just like Ankora had done. Ankora said the map was wrong. She said the crossroads is supposed to be bigger than this and it was the middle part between all four wings. That last part had been established long ago. It's bugging me though. I remember being able to access the middle of the crossroads, which is at the upper right. Why is it closed off now? Is it because the game has changed? Even so, we need to put the me cards inside of the machine, no? Yet it is an inaccessible. Do we wake up elsewhere than I originally thought we'd wake up? Let's assume that this crossroads really is a crossroads. That means there's possibly multiple wings. However, when I look into the secret room, that corner doesn't have access to another wing. It's all blocked off. And you need to access the crossroads, even if briefly, to go into the second and third parts of wing A. That means if there were wings beyond the closed off corners, they wouldn't be accessible. It's safe to assume fewer than four wings are in use. At the very least, a crossroads needs to have multiple roads coursing through it. Hold up, something else doesn't match up. I already figured out the space doesn't match up, but what about the time? I thought about what Mi had said. She said that the ex machina that I had been had been matured since 2002. This wasn't 2002 though. Did I have a hint? What other date did I know? Of course. I also knew 2014. That's the year Superbia was born. That means now we're in the early 30s, perhaps. Oh no, that doesn't seem right. Me also mentioned that it took 12 years. That doesn't match up. Do I have another point of reference? I remembered a stupid detail. Something so minuscule, if, it hadn't, if I hadn't realised at this moment, I would never have thought about it again. That stupid album. That music album Tristidia mentioned. Bad thing, it's from 2002. That's the latest album in that year. Wait, what? What does that mean? Hold on. Hold on, hold on. This means that they're from 2002? But Superbia was born in 2014? That doesn't work. This doesn't match up. This, this is... Oh. I understood. The inconsistency could be explained so very neatly like this. I get it now. It's not that Superbia was born in 2014 and matured over 16 to 19 years. It's that Superbia was born in 2014, and that's it. I was also born now, and I didn't need to mature. 
Me didn't need to mature. We are AIs. Does that mean if Superbia was also an ex marketer, then her body could have been grown from 2002 to 2014 and she'd be herself now? Even if her physical ex marketer age was 12, her body was mature to that of a late teenager and her mind was also made of her memories and experiences. Today is November 19th, 2014 then. That's what that code means. 20141119. There's a date format. God, there's so much to explain to everyone. And the fact that they're all robots too? Unbelievable. But wait, something else doesn't work. Me said I was an alpha prototype with skin and organs, but betas didn't have that. They were just machines with their innards out in the open. I didn't see any of that, and yet I tossed that inconsistency aside for now. I need to recapitulate again, which I did while I was on my way to the elevator. The MDS made a replicated version of the school from 2002 then. All of the people I've been surrounded with since then, since the beginning of this thing, are beta X marketers. They were made for today, November 11th of the year 2014, in order to participate in the Kill Me game. I'm an AI and I'm made of the memories and experiences of everyone else who died so far through these visions. I gained those visions by getting my trust value up to 99% with each and every one of them, which I assume put me in the same branch that they died in by virtue of attaining that number. And I am my helmet. I don't like that idea, but... I slowly looked over my hands. At least I'm alive. And I'm coming for you now, Etainan Marco. I'll find you. It's just as you said before, Marco. With this knowledge, with this body, with this fact, I'm an AI. I'm on a whole other level than humanity. I was made to believe I orchestrated this game because you and Atayan couldn't let me know I was just being played around with. That friend who helped me set it all up? That was you, right, Marco? And yet, I also have memories of orchestrating all of this. But those are probably fake memories, right? But I still don't have the motive. I know the who, I know the what, and I know the, even the when. What is the why, though? As I stumbled through the crossroads, I made my way to the elevator. Yet it wasn't open, and I didn't have the G key to unlock it. I was stuck. What am I supposed to do now? Am I supposed to... I guess there's no harm in trying. Can I hack into Ankara's helmet from here? For a vision or another? If I knew where to find the G key here, or something, then... I sat down against the closed doors of the elevator and focused intensely. I didn't know how I would make it happen, but I tried really hard. And as if answering my plea, my consciousness vanished from this helmet. I'd forgotten what this would do. I'd forgotten it would kill me. As my data was transferred to Ankora's helmet, my previous self was erased once again. And at the destination point, my data reconstructed, copied into, its fami into this familiar territory. Not only that, but I also figured out the timing of these visions. These visions I'd been having ever since I woke up in this body were time for the exact moment when I'd previously been hacking from Ankara's helmet to another one, leaving it vacant. And now I was occupying the helmet again. Here we go. So we're going to be in Ankara's helmet again. I don't know whether to just make this one huge long episode or cut it up, but at this stage I'm all recording it in one go. My vision settled upon the teacher. She was talking to Ankora. However, I had no memories of them coming into the contact at this time and in a classroom of all places. Oh, I get it. This is from the third hacking session. It was the one that led to the me cards being duplicated. But once again, this couldn't have happened. How am I getting these visions? Hello? Can you see me or hear me? Ankura gave no response. We're most likely during the short shutdown I remember having. There had been a weird blackout when I'd hacked Avaritia's helmet, right? This must have been during that time. And yet, the question of how remains unanswered for now. I have very little time, so listen carefully. You have guided us so splendidly. There is yet one more obstacle in your way. After you wake up, take the elevator to the white chamber. There will be eight seats in an octagonal pattern. In the middle will be something else. That will be what you have to solve. Once it is done, 
you will be free to go, along with all of my emptiness. Be aware, however, that solving it will trigger something that will affect my emptiness forever. To put it plainly, you will have the ability to punish seven of them directly. You will be able to save the eighth one. Make your choice carefully. There is no coming back. Once you have made your choice, press the button behind the seat and they will be spared. This is Zitine, right? Why is she giving me all these directives? And most importantly, how? She's speaking as if she knows I'm here at this very point in time, despite the fact that this is just a weird vision. Also, you may want to know. Once everything is over, there will be something else to do. In order to access a particular moment, you will have to do something unorthodox. Have you found any alternative solutions to puzzles yet? This has nothing to do with your final deduction room. It's not for us, but for you. If you find all of them, you will witness something interesting. Now go. Very soon I will join you there too. Very soon you may live the life I've never had. My vision cut off. I was being whisked back to my own helmet. But first, I had to quickly compute something together because some of this didn't match what I knew. This had been nagging at me since the start, and Itain's presence only confirms some of the doubts I've had. To begin with, I'm now convinced there is indeed two Avaretias and two Nvidias. If there weren't, then it wouldn't match what I'd seen before. There had been Mark, the first Nvidia, and Marco, the second one. It wouldn't be otherworldly to expect there to be two of everyone else too. Coming back to what Ancora thought about, the plans didn't fit the skill. It's just like she said. The crossroads has been modified. It's supposed to be bigger because it stands between four wings. And just like Avaritia said, she will join me in the White Chamber. That would be impossible if we couldn't physically meet, right? That can be explained like this. This is Wing A that we've been exploring this whole time, along with the crossroads. What if that name was more than a vague memory from their time at the school? What if it was literally a crossroads for this replicated school too? then that means the crossroads was in fact not at the upper right extremity, but in the middle, which means the actual plans would be like this. This is why the crossroads are different. They had to be modified. If you copy wing A and rotate it like this, you can attach a second wing A to the top. That also explains why the middle wasn't accessible. If it had been, we'd have stumbled into the second group doing their voting rounds. This is the whole school we're in now. And every time I come across, come into Ankara's helmet, I'm actually viewing what a second group has been up to all this time. Occam's razor. Could information really transfer across time? Or was it simpler to transfer it across space? It seems to me that the answer is obvious. I'm being transferred between two physical helmets. Ankara is in the second half, and I'm from the first. This also means that the me was indeed in my body from the second group when she died. Me was occupying the body accompanying Gula and Luxuria from the second group. Not the real Gula and Luxuria, the ex machinas who represented them. I remember some things happening that shouldn't have happened, like someone dying and then they were alive again. And Marco, when he disappeared, he was. He really was going to the first group, this one. He came to this group to confront the me that I am now. That's when I passed out and had that chat with me. Then he went back to the second group. If there were two of everyone though, that meant they were all robots. Or were they only partially robots? I need to get to the bottom of this. I'm coming, White Chamber. It's time to finally end my emptiness. I slammed my fist into my hand, pumping myself up while I prepared myself to enter the elevator. This is it. It's time to solve this final puzzle and be done with everything here. I'll leave with everyone and... Well, if only it was this simple. From what, it, what Itain said, I wouldn't be able to do that, right? Out of the eight of them, I could only personally save one. I entered the elevator after it opened. I mashed my hand on the button, perhaps a little too hard, since I heard a worrying cracking noise coming from it. Since I was an automaton, the elevator was having a little bit of an uh, issue transporting me. I assumed machinery was heavy which meant I could never let anybody try to lift me. They'd instantly know something was up. If I was to live as a person, as I wanted to live, too, like everyone else, then revealing my true nature would break my future. 
After struggling for a while, the elevator finally stopped. The doors opened, and I stepped through. This was the white chamber. The final deduction room. Quickly, I cast a glance towards everyone. Just as Zetine said, they were all in their seats, docile, with some stuff connected to their helmets, Ancora, Invidia, Superbia, Avaritia, Tristidia, Gula, Luxuria, and Era were all there. They were all waiting for me, and yet, none of them moved. Are they unconscious or something? After 24 seconds had passed, the elevator closed behind me, and just like that, the other one, just like the other deduction rooms, everything locked up. I couldn't use either elevator anymore. Since this was a deduction room, I waited for me to give me directives, and yet, she never appeared. Right, she's erased. She doesn't exist anymore. And it did give me a pang of guilt. For some reason, I felt guilty. I felt a little sad that she was gone. Was that an emotion? Was I sad because she was gone, or was I afraid because it could have been me? Putting myself in her shoes, that was the Sally Ann test. No, all of that was wrong. I didn't really feel any of those. Despite it all, I had to admit that that was just me trying to force myself to feel something, to feel more humane. But I wasn't a human. I looked around the room for any hints of what I had to do. It was padded, and it had three elevators. Two of them were in opposite corners. I assumed each of them could be used to access either corner of the crossroads, down below. This is the room Marco used to get to the other side, and the only way for us to move across. And yet, there was a third elevator. That one didn't go down, but up. Was this the way out? I left that corner to instead check the middle. Just as Zetine said, something else was there. It was a strange computer on top of a pedestal, with rough writing on one side. The writings read as such. Birth me code. Solving this will birth me code. Seven will receive the gift of the me code. One will abstain. Choose which will keep their hope. Interesting. It's asking me to pick one of them to be saved from whatever this me code is. I guess I better start thinking about them carefully. Let's sort out my emptiness and bring their story to closure. According to all that I know. First is Pandora. Her crime is related to her role. As leader of my emptiness, she allowed everything to happen, and she took advantage of it. She targeted specific students and reaped the benefits. Her sin is vain glory, since she profited off my emptiness. I know it's not one of the seven deadly sins, as it was rolled up into pride, but originally there were nine sins, not seven. The other is Acedia, rolled up into sloth. Next, Avaritia. Clearly, she has committed one of the worst crimes of all, abusing Pandora's list to hook up with the kids she wanted gone. Her sin is greed because she wanted everything with none of the consequences. Tough luck, Ava. Your sin's close to lust, but... That one goes to Luxuria. He forced himself upon girls who didn't want anything to do with him. He was secure in his gender. He wasn't a girl. He was cleanly a boy who abused his looks and cast a negative shade on others he didn't associate with. Her sin is lust and his crime is also horrible. Did Pandora see all this happening? Right under her nose? I don't know, but allowing it and enabling it was terrible too. All the kids they kidnapped died or went missing. And those who went missing were collected by Tristidia for his family's business. It seems his father was part of this empty ass too. He's sloth, because he willingly did nothing to help them. If I had to guess, a bunch of those kids were bullies. That must be why he had those bandages. He might have been beaten due to his corpulence. Taking revenge through an action must have satisfied him. The other kids were killed by Superbia. She was probably working off the frustrations of her personal life. Her sin is pride because she thought she was above everyone. And yet, her crime is still just as unjustifiable. Superbia dated Era, whose sin was wrath. No doubt Superbia's frustrations rubbed off on him, and he grew increasingly angrier over his lot in life. He was hired by her parents to distribute drugs, right? Drugs that turn people into religious zealots. As soon as wrath and his crime is clear, distributing those drugs might have helped him in the short run, but in the long run he ruined life after life all on Pandora's watch. One of Superbia's murderers came to light and it was pinned on Nvidia's father. 
as a son coming after six sisters must have also been a mental blow to NVIDIA. As the youngest of the seven, how do you get recognised by your family? If he managed to free his father, he'd have done something none of his sisters could do. And so his sin is envy, and his crime is perhaps lesser in the eyes of many, but it still sent an innocent behind bars. True, his father was innocent. It's hard to say, and yet his actions still ruined Gula's life. Her sin is gluttony, because she was a glutton for her father's care. Clearly, he did care about her a lot, but when he was taken from her, all of this ended. She sought revenge. Her crime is related to the bombs. She's a terrorist who destroyed the school that decided to sweep everything under the rug. They ignored her father entirely, despite the fact that he was not the criminal who killed Superbia's targets. And what of Ancora then? Of all of them, she has no sin. She joined my emptiness because her sister was at the helm, and she wanted to stop her. Laudable, but she failed to stop it before it got out of hand. Perhaps she got on too late. I think out of all of them, Ancora is the one who deserves to avoid whatever this machine will do. I made my choice. However, before I moved in, I had a thought. Who's the final sin? There were nine sins. The final one, Acedia. That might be my sin. After all, even with everything I'd gone through, it's hard to care for any of them. And that's what Acedia is. Lack of care. It's exactly what I feel. I wandered over to Ancora's seat. This is who I'd save. I looked around and noticed a button on the back. The indication above said, release. Oh, well, she's the one who is the least sinful. My task is clear then. Ancora, you go free. It is but a coincidence that your nickname means hope. And it is an even bigger coincidence that you were the traitor too. Ironic that I'd be in her head this whole time. And that she's the one who will go free while the rest will be punished. I pushed the button. A soft hissing noise came, and the tubes connected to the helmet seemed to fall limp. Whatever that button did, I doubted anything bad would happen now. Now I had my puzzle to solve. I scurried back to the pedestal in the middle. I had to hurry. I only had 24 minutes and a few of them had gone by. Once I would solve this, everyone would be free, possibly in more ways than one. Once I would solve this, I knew it would be the end of my emptiness. But what about this entire thing? I still don't know the why. Yatine did say that she would meet me here later, which means I would get answers after this. Even if the curtains would close on my emptiness, I'll have a little more to do. This is the end of my emptiness and the beginning of my full life. It's time to birth me code, whatever that means. Let me out. The answer is... Birth me code? I can't remember. It's been so long. It was birth me code, wasn't it? Yeah. That's what I thought. It's been like a year, just about, since I played this, right? Or maybe more. I don't know. <laughs> Gotta get that memory going. I didn't expect this. Who, who's this? What's going on? I'm E288. I know it's not really a name. I see, I'm Greta. My name is Greta Penma. You watched the leader of my emptiness. She was your sister, wasn't she? You did nothing to stop her. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Um, I tried. I joined it. I joined my emptiness to stop her. It wasn't enough, though. Sorry. You have nothing to be sorry about, really. At least you didn't die. I'm not dead, but this is... This is just me connecting with your helmet. It contains all the information pertaining to you. Oh, I see. Kind of creepy. Do you know why I'm here, then? Yes, you were a member of my emptiness. But I joined really late. For all intents and purposes, you were hope. I know you don't like hearing that word. You're right. I felt... strange. You'll get over it. Your mind will get a wipe. What? Your memories will be overwritten to protect you. I don't want that. 
I don't want to lose my memories. Are you sure? Even if those memories were mine? By losing those memories, you'll forget your trauma. Even so, they make me who I am. It's okay, I think I saved you from it. What I can't stop is the fact that you have to stay here. I don't want to stay here either. Your sister is here too. Then I guess it's fine. I want to be with my sister. Commendable, even if you're in danger. You know how, you know it'll be hard, right? Does my sister know I'm here? Not yet, but she will soon. You're with a tiny marker right now. Those names ring a bell. Are they the people keeping me here? Yes, there's a good reason for it too. I think they're trying to protect you, somehow. I don't like needing protection. Our time's running out. There's only so much I can talk about in one second. What will happen to me? You'll go back to being a nice young girl. All this is too scary, but it's the truth. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Your memories are yours, now go and live. Okay. I came back to my helmet, one final time. It had been quite a trip, but now I'd had enough. I wanted answers. I solved the final puzzle. I punished seven of them. And now they were all awake. They were all awake and they were all looking at me. Immediately I brought my hands up to my face. My helmet, it fell off. How is that possible? Um, hello? Why is my helmet off? Error and Tristidia stepped forward. The rest of them were, the rest were immobile. Waiting. Wait, you're Alex Seville and you're Etienne Schmidt, aren't you? Yeah. That's us. Your helmet is off because you now occupy your ex marking a body instead. Why am I stuck with this stuttering one? One of us had to occupy that one. It sucks, but at least you aren't fat. Point taken. What's going on? From the moment they spoke, I already figured out something wasn't right. What did those machines do to them? What exactly is the me code that was gifted? Oh that? It's simple. Hold up. Maybe it'd be better to leave it to someone else. You're stuttering a lot. As if it's my fault. Unfortunately, it can't be me. I have to leave promptly. While it's not being urgent in the past 12 years, I can't let the Schmidt facilities take advantage of the empty ass's resources anymore. You're leaving? Right now, in fact. Goodbye. I'll see you later. And just like that, he took the elevator up. I looked over at NVIDIA and Avericia. They looked, they took Alex's place and talked to me next. Mark Tremblay and Ariel Weber, correct? Correct, but also incorrect. I can explain it all, since my own job won't be until later. Irel, what about you? I have to go too. I'd like to stay here, but whatever I say, Atayan herself will be able to say better than I would. Good point. Maybe it's best to leave it for later. Leave what for later? Your explanations. Let's just make it simple for now. Irel was about to leave, but I grabbed her arm. What are you, what are you gonna do? What's your deal? I have to transport the vats in the reactor rooms. They were used to keep everyone in stasis, but now I have a new use for them. In stasis? She pulled away from me and continued to walk away. Soon she took one of the elevators Etienne had, hadn't taken, since she was going down and not up. Yes, in stasis. You don't think everyone here is a robot, do you? These bodies certainly aren't. What does that have to do with anything? Think of it that way. You already figured out that there were two teams, so let's go over them quickly. At first the plan was to have an entire group of humans and one made of solely robots, see? But the plan was modified. The first group kept eight humans. Everyone in it used to be a human, and eight of them were the ones who sat in the chairs. The ones who got punished accordingly by me. The ninth member used to be Ancora, or Greta Pen Penmill. But they moved her to the second group and replaced her with me, E288, an Alpha X Machina. That meant I'd mistakenly absolved Pandora and not Ancora. 
all eight of them had been irredeemable, so no matter which one I picked, it would have been someone I didn't want to save. At the very least, Greta wouldn't have to suffer the loss of her sister. A loss of whatever it was that these humans had gone through. Considering how they acted now, it wasn't too far off the mark. The second group originally had nine Beta X Machinas. Instead, they replaced the Beta X Machinas for Ancora, Avaritia, Nvidia with Greta, Greta, Etain, and Marker, respectively. That meant one ninth of the first group was X Machina, and three ninths of the second group were humans, and the remaining two thirds were X Machinas. Do you get it now? That was how they were distributed. How do you know all this? You're Mark. I pointed over at a random person, right at Gula. And you're Lucille Boisjoli, aren't you? That's right. I'm Lucille. What about it? She wasn't speaking with the usual meaningless big words. I'd love to say in chat, but I also have something to do. So if you don't have anything specific to ask, just wait for a time. Waiting. Always waiting, isn't it? Can't I just get some answers for once? Not from me. Direct. I have to leave right away because I need to handle the unused bomb. She motioned at Superbia. Any Sansoisi. Are you listening? Take my spot and explain this all to her. She left and in her place a very disgruntled girl came forward. She looked at me with her usual expression. It was refreshing to see their faces but... They didn't feel normal. Yes, I could see their faces. I knew that, and I embraced that fact, but it didn't feel like them. Lucille wasn't speaking normally. Sure, Alex was stuttering, but he wasn't all threats now either. Etienne hadn't been the same downer guy as he'd been for the past hours. Who... Who were these people? Were they really the people who had accompanied me through this entire ordeal? Or were they... someone else? Hey, you're spacing out. I can tell. Don't try and lie to me. Oh, right. I'm listening, go on. I'm saying, I can't explain anything either. Do you know what I have to do now? I have a feeling you'll tell me. I have to leave this place and infiltrate my family. Their funds are being funneled to the empty ass. I have to freeze it, or better, snatch it for myself. Do you understand how hard that will be? I don't think I care. That's why I don't have the time to stay here. Yes, it's been 12 years. Better late than even later. Alex? The guy didn't seem concerned when she called for him. Instead, Annie smacked his back to catch his attention. Apparently, nobody's listening here. I'm talking to you. Oh, sure, yeah, right. Sorry, it's hard to adjust. I have a lot of drugs to destroy, so... <laughs> I'm going to be flushing them down the toilet. I'm going to be standing over the toilet, emptying sacks into it. The two of them left together. Everybody had gone now except for a handful. Mark was still here, and so was Luxuria. I addressed the latter. Hey you, Nico Hope. You don't have anything to do, right? Explain right now. Why are you all acting so weirdly? Simple. The reason why is because functionally, we're dead. He waited a moment, but I had no reaction. No reaction, huh? I guess your emotions will come eventually. If we're lucky. Anyway, my parents are already dead, and I have no real involvement with all this, so... I'm gonna help Arel move these bats. They're pretty heavy, and it's not fun to do alone. Yes, moving everything out of here before the empty S gets their hands back on it is paramount. If we fail, they'll just reuse it for atrocious deeds. So you guys are doing something good now. That's what you claim? Exactly. Toodles. And with that, he was gone too. He took the elevator to head back down and meet with Irel. Okay. What about you? What's your job then? Everyone seems to know what they're doing. I figure I owe you some explanations. As you have noticed, none of us are acting the way you're expecting us to. And it's not a farce or anything. We're not us. That's what I mean. When you solved the birth me code puzzle, it did exactly that. It gave us the me code. Which is basically the Mastermind's identity, their memories and experiences rolled up into one. Our previous consciousness was erased, a bit like how you've overwritten data on a computer, 
when you copy a file somewhere that already has a file named the same way. And so we're now Etain. All of us here, except for not Greta here, are Etain. I have a name, you know. Stop calling me not Greta. And how do you know that name? Sometime during his explanation, the final person had risen up from their seat. It was Ancora, or really Pandora. She was Ancora from the first group, but she was also Pandora from my emptiness. She seemed to have a pretty normal reaction. She panicked a little, looking around the room and frowning at Mark. It seems she wanted answers too. She's Hannah Penmo, if you're really curious. Yes, that's me. Who the fuck are you though? Wait, H and G? Hannah and Greta? H and G? Are they the H and G from... Um... This must be a prequel then, right? Who the fuck are you though? I recognise Mark, but not you. I'm E288. It's not a name, I know. It's weird. I don't know what it stands for. You will know, if you ask a time. The real time, not us. Okay, and when is she going to be here? She said she'd meet me here. Very soon. In fact, she'll be here in just a second, but I have to go. You're not going yet. You're going to give me some answers. Nope. I have to track down a certain principal man of interest. It's not going to be easy, but I have a lead. Just leave the stars. And with that, he effortlessly pushed away Hannah, who'd been trying to stop him in his tracks. He slid into the elevator going up, leaving me alone with her. So, until she gets here, what are you... Our talk was instantly interrupted when the doors to the elevator of the second group opened. Out of it came Marco, Greta, and Etine.